could a decision that you make right now influence the past? The delayed choice quantum eraser thought experiment seems to suggest that it can. It claims that your decision about how to measure a quantum system right now could affect whether it behaved like a particle or a wave in the past, whether the past was seconds ago or years ago. Welcome back to the Quantum Paradoxes video series, where we demystify quantum paradoxes using quantum computing. In this video, I'm going to turn the quantum eraser into a quantum circuit that you can run on a quantum computer. This will reveal a very simple resolution to the quantum eraser paradox, and you'll be able to run your own experiment to show why we can't really influence the past. The quantum eraser is a variation of the double slit thought experiment. I recommend watching my previous video on the double slit to understand that thought experiment and how to implement it on a quantum computer. But I'll recap the double slit experiment now before we dive in to the quantum eraser. So let's go to the light board. In the double slit thought experiment, if we send a single photon through the double slit, then it will interfere with itself and lead to an interference pattern on the screen. This is the wave-like behavior of the photon. If we add a detector, which lets us detect which slit the particle went through, then it will behave as though it either went through the top slit or through the bottom slit. And then we no longer have an interference pattern on the screen. We just see two bright regions, one for the top slit and one for the photons that went through the bottom slit. This is the particle-like behavior of the photons. Now the twist with the quantum eraser thought experiment is that instead of using a classical detector to tell us which way the photons went, we use a quantum detector. This can be a single qubit, which will be in one state if we measure the qubit in the Z basis, which tells us that the particle went through the top slit, or it could be in another state in the Z basis, which would tell us that the particle went through the bottom slit. We could also choose to measure our detector qubit in a different basis. If we measure it in the X basis, then this will destroy the information about which path the photon went through. And instead, we'll get information about the X basis state of the detector qubit. So what do we expect to see as the intensity pattern on the screen? Since we could either measure our detector qubit in the Z basis where we get the pathway information about the photon or in the X basis where we destroy the pathway information about the photon. But what we find is that the photon behaves as though it just went through one slit or the other slit. So the pattern we get on the screen just has these two bright regions that we got from the classical observation of the photons pathway. The cool thing about the quantum eraser thought experiment is that if we choose to measure our detector qubit in the X basis, where we destroy the pathway information, we can then separate out the photons that hit the screen according to whether we measured them to be in one X basis state, the red one, or in another X basis state, the blue one. So if we just look at the red state, then we can actually see an interference pattern on the screen. And if we just look at the photons that gave us the blue X basis detector outcome, then we can also see an interference pattern on the screen. Now these two interference patterns add up together to give the same intensity pattern as we have for a particle-like photon passing through the slits. I like to understand this using these 3D glasses, which have a red filter and a blue filter. 
they let you see red light through one eye and blue light through the other eye. The information we get from measuring the detector lets us separate the photons that hit the screen into two groups, a bit like the red filter and blue filter do. Then we can look through the red filter to see an interference pattern on the screen or look through the blue filter to see an interference pattern on the screen. But without these filters, we can't see the individual patterns. So if we choose to measure our detector qubit in such a way that destroys the information about which slit the photon went through, we retrieve information that enables us to extract the interference patterns. Since each photon went through the slit individually, it seems like the photons were actually able to interfere with themselves and passed through both slits. This strange behaviour seems to suggest the following paradox. By choosing how to measure our quantum detector qubit, which we can do long after the photons hit the screen, we appear to be able to determine whether or not each photon behaved as though it went through a single slit behaving like a particle, or both slits behaving like a wave. This implies that we're able to influence the past of the photon by actions we do in the present. A paradox. To resolve the paradox, we can express it using beam splitters and single photon detectors in a setup known as the Max Zender interferometer. So here we have a source of single photons, and when the photon reaches the first beam splitter, it's split into an equal superposition of being reflected and transmitted. Then the mirrors reflect the two parts of the superposition to meet again at the second beam splitter, where they constructively interfere and merge back into a single beam. So the photons are always detected as being transmitted after the second beam splitter. This is analogous to seeing the series of bright and dark interference fringes in the double slit experiment, giving evidence that the photon interfered with itself. Now, if we add a detector to check which path the photon went through, then the photon state will be projected into either the top path or the bottom path. So then when the photon reaches the second beam splitter, it's split into an equal superposition of being reflected and transmitted. So we'll detect it half the time being reflected and half the time being transmitted. This is analogous to seeing the two bright spots on the screen of the double slit experiment when we detect which path the photon goes through the slits. Now let's test it with Qiskit. We can express both of the scenarios as simple quantum circuits. If you're not familiar with quantum gates like CNOT and Hadamard, take a look at the Basics of Quantum Information course on the IBM Quantum Learning Platform linked in the description below. So let's start coding. Here I'm going to represent the photon as a qubit and the beam splitters as Hadamard gates and the path detector and final screen are both measurements. Then when we run the circuit, we get these four different outcomes. I recommend pausing to watch my double slip video if you haven't already to see how the outcomes of this circuit map to the double slit thought experiment. Now, the twist with the quantum eraser is that instead of adding a classical measurement after the first beam splitter to see which path the photon went through, we instead let the photon interact with a controlled quantum system that we can choose to measure later to find out which path the photon went through. So to model this quantum detector in our quantum circuit, we'll introduce an additional qubit into the circuit called the detector qubit. Then instead of adding a classical measurement after the first Hadamard gate, we add a control knot gate between the photon qubit and detector qubit. Then we apply a second Hadamard gate to the photon qubit and the final measurement of the photon onto the screen as before. So let's see what happens to the outcome of our photon qubit when we run this circuit there's an equal chance of getting 0 and 1, indicating that there is no interference pattern. We now have a choice to make in how we measure the detector qubit. 
we could apply a standard Z measurement of the detector qubit after the screen measurement. So let's run this to extract information about whether the photon went through the top path or bottom path. You can see that we get a random mix of all possible measurement outcomes. There's no way we can extract an interference pattern here. Now let's see what happens if instead of making a Z measurement on the detector qubit, we make an X measurement on the detector qubit, which we implement by applying a Hadamard and then a Z measurement. Then when we run this, you can see the outcomes are always 0, 0 or 1, 1. This time, we don't receive any information about which path the photon took by measuring the detector qubit, but you can see that we get correlations between our results. The detector qubit is always zero when the photon qubit is zero, and one when the photon qubit is one. This is analogous to separating the points where photons hit the screen into two sets, each individually showing the bright and dark spots characteristic of interference. So now we can see what's really happening. Introducing the detector qubit has the same effect on the measurement outcomes of the photon as putting a classical measurement in between the Hadamard gates does. This means that the detector qubit causes the photon state to decohere and destroys the interference pattern, regardless of how we measure it later. Now, measuring the detector qubit in the Z basis after the measurement of the photon doesn't change anything about the photon's past behavior. It does project the system into one path or another path and tells us which path the photon took with no effect on the measurement of the photon. But if we measure the detector qubit in the X basis after the measurement of the photon, it also doesn't change anything about the photon's past behavior. However, because the photon and detector qubit become fully entangled by the C0 gate, and we're now measuring the photon and detector qubits in the same basis, the X basis, their outcomes are fully correlated. This is why we can use the outcome of the detector qubit to fully predict the outcome of the photon qubit measurement. It's the entanglement of the photon and detector qubits that gives the illusion of being able to extract a single photon interference pattern retrospectively in the delayed choice eraser thought experiment. So it turns out that we can't influence the past behavior of the photon after all. It decoheres upon interacting with the detector qubit regardless of how we measure it later. Though if we measure it in the X basis, we can see the entanglement between the photon and detector qubits. Like having access to the two separate lenses of the 3D glasses. This is the origin of the illusion of single photon interference in the double slit quantum eraser. Signatures of entanglement were mistaken for signatures of single photon interference. We've shown that entanglement doesn't let us affect the past, but can it give distant particles an instantaneous connection across space? Join me in the next video to resolve the famous einstein podolsky rosen paradox of spooky action at a distance using quantum circuits. All the code from this video is in a Jupyter notebook linked below, along with a blog post with more information. See you next time.